Yo, what's going on guys? It is JD here, back with another episode of the No Money Spent Road to Glory, the first video of the day. Of course, yesterday we uploaded three videos, so if you missed any of them, be sure to go ahead and check them out. And today will, of course, again, be another triple upload. So we've got this first video here today, which is going to be all about investing. Second video of the day is going to be a gameplay with the Galaxy Opal Derek Rose, which, of course, we packed in, when was that, Friday's video, which is amazing. And the third video of the day is going to be listing my favourite small forwards in the game because we've done it with point guards, centres, and now we're going to go small forwards, and then we'll probably do shooting guards and then power forwards to finish it off. So a lot to go through today. So investments, like I said, I get a lot of comments about investments, which players are best to go for, uh, which sets are best to go for. So today I'm going to really try and break it down as best I can. We've got a lot of MT to cash in, which should take us back over 1 million which is just insane considering the team we have. Uh, so that's a bit of a madness. And of course, I'll go through my investments I've currently got as well and see about selling some of them off. I've got a lot of comments from yesterday's three videos, as you might expect to go through. So I'm going to split them up into this first video and then the third video of the day as well. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the limited time event today is pretty damn nice. Two free tokens after every unlimited win. So I'm probably going to hit this in the 7pm to 9pm window. Hopefully get a couple more W's. You never know. We might be able to go 12 and 0 before the end of the month. That would be fantastic. The club is already in such a good way. If I can add that Galaxy Opal James Worthy, that's who the player is, to the squad as well, that would just take us to another level. So two free tokens. That would be very nice indeed. Onto the agenda, we've got one triple threat offline and then two unlimiteds. One of the unlimiteds is only for 325 MT which is really damn poor. The other one for 500, which isn't too bad. And then, of course, yeah, got these three dominations that we got from weekly objectives yesterday, which I'll probably get through, maybe all three of them, by the end of the week because we haven't done any more Spotlight Sims just yet. Haven't really played much since yesterday, to be fair. Done a couple of games of Triple Threat online with this absolute god trio that are just not losing. They just win absolutely every game because, uh, of course, Pink Diamond Richie Guerin or Guerin is still on those Triple Threat online boards. And, of course, Galaxy Opal Dan Isel is still in the vault, which uh, we've got till, what was the date today? The date's the 22nd today, so we've got quite a few days to go ahead and try and get him out of there, which is pretty cool. Yesterday, we opened it the vault once. Well, I opened twice. Once we've got one token, and the other time, we actually got a diamond contract. Uh, diamond consumables pack and out of that we've got a diamond contract so that was pretty damn nice from a free pack from the vault so we come down to the auction house right here let's cash in on some stuff so we have got the remainder of our shack investments they all sold for 3.9k do we have any other shacks down here no we don't phil chenier big one that sold 77,000 mt thank you very much indeed the diamond contract that we packed yesterday that went for 15k these guys were duplicates. The Curry Sixes, they were a gold shoe that gave a plus three to the plus three to the three pointer. I think that's right. Uh, so we've got over a thousand MT for that. Very nice. Courtney Lee was a duplicate, I think. Sydney Moncrease, 30k for that one, and 30k for this one down here as well, which is very nice. Uh, Cam Reynolds was the heat check box player that didn't sell yesterday. A couple of coaches that for some reason sold for quite a little bit. Quinn Snyder, a Ruby card going for two and a half thousand. And then George Mikan as a Legacy Diamond selling for 26k. And that does indeed take us over 1 million MT with this team. Like, oh, I'm absolutely lost for words. A million MT with two Galaxy Opals from the token market, let's not forget. We haven't just spent MT, we've spent tokens as well. Uh, and we've got two Galaxy Opals from there and we've got this squad right here. 450k in KD, 450k in Kareem, 700k we paid for Ben Simmons, we've got 200k in Derek Rose, 80k ish in Bam and a bio as well. And then of course we've got D Wade. We have got Paul Zingis down here as well. This is just unbelievable. So really, really happy with where the club is at at the moment. But of course, we're not gonna stay there. We're not just gonna sit on that million and just wait for it to uh go down or go up. We are, of course, making investments. So currently invested, I have got 15 Eric Pascals, 15 Dante DiVincenzos, and one Jay Williams. Not much. And then, of course, over here, we have got 12 Ruby Thorn Makers, and we've still got two Legacy Mark Prices. Now, the Legacy players, we'll talk about them to begin with. So all of these are gone apart from Earl LaPearl Monroe, who doesn't sell for much at all, literally like 3k. So might as well just keep him in the club for the time being. Over here, we've still got a Mark Price. So we've got three Mark Prices that we need to sell. Earlier on, he was going for 20k, which I am not comfortable with selling him for. But it looks like, to be fair, we are going to be able to get 25k for him. So you know what? All three of them, 25k a piece, I will take it. Because we have had these Legacy cards for so long. And I think I did miss my opportune window to go ahead and sell these. I did sell quite a few of them. And when the token update happened, the token market update happened, we did cash out and make a lot of MT 
on some of our investments. We sold people like the Bill Walton. Uh, he went out the door. The Nate Thurman, they got sold. But this uh, Mark Price definitely held on to him for a little bit longer than I should have done. But Phil Chenier, it was good holding on to him because we got 76 or 78k for him, which is very nice indeed. So we'll get rid of these Mark Prices. That should do it. Hopefully get through, rid of all three of those. And then we have only got the other one, which is David Thompson. And we sold a couple of them yesterday for like 16k. And it does look like he is about the same price. And that's just because there's so many up on the auction house. So you know what? We'll just go ahead and get rid of him as well. I'm kind of getting to a point where if my investments aren't working out, I'm just happy to just cash in. Uh, I don't know if I'm making losses on these cards because I can't remember actually what I bought them for because I bought them so long ago. Um, but you know what? I'm just happy to see more MT coming into the club. So there we go. That should be about just under another 100k coming back to us. So before we get into which cards I would invest in at the moment, let's have a look at if I've got anything else going on down here. Paul Pierce was from a uh, locker code, so that's fine. The Moments of the Week sets are still holding on to a couple of these as investments, like Moments of the Week 8, 9, and the majority of 10 and 11. So one of the reasons for holding on to this is because it's just so damn cheap for 100 tokens. Like, Jason Tatum was down at 40k. It looks like he's actually gone up a little bit, which is nice. I might sell him too fair for 45k. We've got Carl Lowry coming in. If he's 25, if he's 25k, I'm definitely going to try and sell him. But 23k, okay. And then Spencer Dinwiddie, probably like 20k, not even. Probably about 15k. So absolutely worthless, pretty much. Um, but yeah, I did invest heavily in six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And of course, I had eleven. But I never actually went ahead and bought the uh, pink diamond Tatum because he was very expensive. And I didn't buy the uh, diamond cards either. But I did buy these Amethyst just to see what happens to their prices. Uh, but they've got rarer but haven't really gone up much in price to be fair. Still a lot more than I paid for them. I think I would have bought these guys for like 3k back when they first came out. Maybe even less than that. And the rubies would have been bought for discard value. There is no way Darius Garland is up at 7k. Is he up at 5k? That's mad. Okay, so there we go straight away. Darius Garland was bought for a discard value. He's up at 5k. Why is he the only one at 5k? I don't know. And then Mello, I think a lot more people would have invested in him and actually gone out of their way to pick him up. Uh, but he's still up at 4k, so that's not bad. So I'll probably end up uh, sending off a couple of these guys by tomorrow. Uh, any of these rubies gone up in price? Not really. Um, and then over on the other side right here, we have got the prime sets. Obviously, these are... Okay, we'll start with these. These are, in my opinion, very, very good investments. Now... If you don't have millions of MT, uh, then obviously you're not going to be able to afford these two Galaxy Opals, but you will be able to afford these two pink diamonds. Now, Paul Zingis, when I picked him up, was 110,000 MT, and it was the same situation for Dwayne Wade. I think I paid 110k for him as well. Now, when they release who this mystery player, the mystery award is going to be, these players are going to go up in price, in my opinion. I think it's absolutely a no-brainer that they are going to go up in price, because the mystery player is going to have to be someone ridiculous. Bear in mind you've got to lock in, like... Just from these four players, it's about 1.3-ish million, something like that. Um, so, of course, you're going to have to have another player as well. That's going to be the fifth and final player to lock in. So, this mystery player is going to have to be absolutely otherworldly. Like, a lot of people have said it might be Galaxy Opal Shaq. I've said it might be Galaxy Opal Shaq. I think it might be. It might be someone like a Galaxy Opal Wilt who can speed boost and three-point shoot. I don't know, but, I mean, we haven't really had a center in this set yet. So, it is likely. I mean, if you look at the positions, we've got point guard, shooting guard, small forward, and power forward. Obviously, that means the final player here could be a centre, but you never know. It could mean the reward is going to be a centre as well. So these two cards right here, I can easily see them going up to 200k a piece when the mystery player is released. They are a little bit risky because obviously they are worth uh, that much and they will come down a little bit if they aren't required. Uh, if, the, if the reward player isn't great, I can see them going buy nows, but I still don't think they'll go too far under that 100k mark. So... Not in, not very risking too much, but you do have to have quite a bit of MT to begin with. So legacy players are, or prime players are very good investments, in my opinion. Any of these guys are investments? Not particularly. Um, a couple of these guys, maybe. Um, but yeah, this set right here is what I'm going to recommend to you guys right now. So as you saw from my auction house, I've got 15 Dantes and 15 Eric Pascals. And I've also got one other Jay Williams. Now, this card is Discard Valley. So you want to be buying him. Bear in mind, as a Ruby card, he discards for 800 MT. You want to be buying him from no more than 1,000 MT. And you are always, always going to be able to make profit on him. Because he is so, so damn good. As a Ruby card coming in at six foot four with seven Hall of Fame badges, including Catch and Shoot, Quick First Step, and Clamps. And then stats-wise, 84 driving layout with an 80 driving dunk. It's not bad. A 90 mid-range and a 91 three-pointer is very good. He can speed boost. He's got 95 perimeter D. And then 91 speed, acceleration, and 96 lateral quickness. It is a fantastic, fantastic card. 
Uh, this card is also one that people are investing in, and uh, look at that. You can genuinely, genuinely pick him up for his discard value. You will never lose MT on this card. Uh, and let's see if we went ahead and actually won one of those. It'd be pretty cool if we did. So the reason this Jarrett Culver card is, look at that, 800 MT. We can discard him with the amount we paid for him. Uh, he is based off of Tracy McGrady. Now, yesterday I messed up in my video a little bit. I said that Cam Reddish was based off Tracy McGrady, but Cam Reddish is based off Paul George, and Jarrett Culver is the one who is based off of Tracy McGrady. So he is six foot six, and he can play the point guard position, which is, of course, very, very handy. He has eight Hall of Fame badges, including quick first step, contact finisher, and Green Machine Hot Zone Hunter. So really nice shooting ones. 90 driving dunk with an 80 driving layup, 97 mid-range, 84-3, he can speed boost. Defensively, not as good as Dante, but he does have the 90 speed as well. So both of these guys, like I said, you can buy them for literally discard value. So you're never going to lose MT. So these are very low risk investments, but they are also low reward investments. In my opinion, they'll probably go up to three to 4,000 MT. And I don't think they'll go higher than that. So you're going to be making a couple, of MT, a couple of thousand MT per card, which still, when you think about it, isn't too bad. Next up, Eric Pascal, like, like you've just seen, I have bought a load of this, this card, and I was actually buying him when he was 1,200 MT max. And again, he discards for 1,000 MT. So the trick is, you never, if you're investing heavily in a player that is low risk, you always want to be buying close to their discard value. So we bought 15 Eric Pascals for 1,200 MT. And for this card to be that cheap was criminal, because he comes in at the power forward, small forward position. So really, you want to run him at the small forward position. Six foot seven, 17 Hall of Fame badges, including shooting badges. He's got playmaking badges in quick first step, and he's got gold badges like Intimidator, Clamps, etc. 88 driving layout with an 85 driving dunk. 95 mid-range, 88 three-pointer, he can speed boost. He's got good all-round defense, good all-round rebounding, and good all-round speed. Such a good card, and again, I can easily see him going up to that 5,000 MT mark. So again, a very, very good card to invest in. Now we're getting onto the diamonds who are a little bit more higher risk, I suppose, of how much you're actually having to pay them, pay for them. So you can see at the moment, Jay Williams is selling for about 5,500 MT. And we have a look at Danny Manning, and he is coming in at around about 7,000 MT, I'm going to say for him. Now, these two, I think, have the highest potential, but you're also risking a little bit more. So I think Danny Manning, for as good as he is, he he should easily, he, I mean, both of these cars should easily go up to the 10,000 MT mark, in my opinion. So you've definitely got good room for profit. Danny Manning, I think, has the biggest ceiling. I think he could easily go up to 15k because this card is unbelievable. Six for ten, speed boosting with Hall of Fame quick first step. Really, really good offensive stats. Really all well, all round, well rounded. There we go. Well rounded, all round defensive stats and good speed as well. For somebody who's six foot ten, this card is so damn cheap. Now, I haven't actually picked up loads of these guys just yet, as you have seen. We have one other Jay Williams, which I believe I picked up for 5,000 MT. And the thing to do when you are trying to pick all these guys up, don't just go for snipes in terms of buy now. So obviously you always want to check what the cheapest buy now is at the time that you are buying them. So I imagine it's about 6,000 MT. So yeah, 6,000 looks like his ceiling. We'll dump that just a little bit low, 6K. And there we go. So he's being held at 6,000 MT. So straight away from that, you want to go to the bids and you want to make sure that you are bidding at least 500 underneath that. So we saw loads with 5.5K bids uh, and I think it would probably struggle to get one for under that but I would say 5.75k is a very very good price to pay for this card like I said if he goes up to 10k you're making still 4k per per card and it looks like someone is trying to do exactly the same as me so we'll bid on this one right here and the trick is you really want to be doing this on the day that the cards come out or the day after because there's just so many hundreds and hundreds of the card out this this set has been out for two days now so they have settled a little bit in price but there is still a lot of room for them to go up, in my opinion. So we've got Danny Manning there for 7k. That's probably a snipe, to be fair. Probably should have picked him up. Uh, but yeah, it looks like about 7.5k is his price at the moment. So yeah, 6, 6 9, one is there. So we'll pick that one up. Why not? So 7k, you want to look for this card. And again, like I said, I think he's got the biggest ceiling. This card is so good. You think to the compare... The, wow. The cards you can compare him to, English are going to be like Diamond Hedy Turkle and Diamond Lamar Odom. And they were very, very expensive early on. So you can see someone here is trying to cop all of these for 6.2. So if we put that bid, we're getting in for 6.4 and 6.4 and also 6.4. So we're getting them for about 6.5k, which is a really good deal in my opinion. 6,500 MT for Danny Manning is a really, really good price. And I'll strongly advise you guys to go ahead and invest in him as well. So we put that one on that one and that'll see us done with him. So we might win all of those. We might not. We might win some of them. We might not. After that, you're looking at these pink diamonds. Now, they do indeed have the potential to go up, but 
they're a lot more volatile because, I mean, you look at this Pink Diamond Greg Odin with 26 Hall of Fame badges. You look down here at Diamond J Williams with 30. So I think these lower tier cars really have the potential to go up in price more than these Pink Diamonds. I don't think these are good value when you think how cheap these Diamond cards are. Even the Amethyst cards coming in with 17 Hall of Fame badges. So if you're looking at investment, I don't really think that Pink Diamonds and Galaxy Opals are the way to go. Having said that, Galaxy Opals are really, really cheap when they first dropped. So yesterday, or sorry, on Friday when these Campus Legends packs first came out, Melo was down at 300 to 350k and now he's up over 400k. If we go back a long way, for an example, MJ, when he was out in the Super Packs, went down to 200k. He's now over 330k, so that has massively changed his price. So yeah, definitely any new set that comes out, you want to be investing in them, and uh, you want to be investing in the cheap ones, and you want to make sure they're good ones. You don't want to go for a cheap one just for the sake of it. So someone like Jaleel Okafor, he is going to be dirt cheap, but there is, there is a reason this guy is dirt cheap. That's because he is absolutely trash. So you definitely don't want to be going for someone like him. But someone like Pascal, Jay Williams, Danny Manning, the Ruby cards, all five of these guys are such good investments in my opinion. If I had to tier them, I would say go for Danny Manning first, then Dante, then Jay Williams, then Eric Pascal, and then Jarrett Culver. That's my opinion in the top five out of these set. Now, of course, there are still some other cards that have had some value and have been good investments in the past. And just go show how much these cards go up in price. So when Michael Ray Richardson was in these packs, you could pick him up comfortably on bid for 3,000 MT. And we're seeing now he's probably around 6,500 to 7,000 MT. So you could double your MT on this card. And let's not forget, that card has 24 Hall of Fame badges. Jay Williams comes in with 30. So the cards are just getting better and better. And the same situation with the Chauncey Billips down here as well. He has now gone up to like 8K. And again, he's only got the 19 Hall of Fame badges. And again, when he came out, you could get him for like two to 3,000 MT. So we've seen the same pattern happen many, many times with these packs. And it's just all about cashing in at the right time. So, yeah, definitely going to invest in some of these players. Now, other tips and tricks you want to look out for when investing is players that are involved in locker codes. So, I think it was earlier in the week. So, we've got outbid on quite a few of these. But we've got quite a few of the Danny Mannings. David Thompson sold for 16,500 MT, which is very nice indeed. So, we've got outbid on all of the uh, Jay Williams. Oh, did we get? Yeah, okay. So, we've got one Jay Williams. We've got one Jarrett Culver. And then we've got four Danny Mannings. Not bad at all. So, yeah. Locker codes, they are a very, very good time to invest. So from the locker code we had a couple of days back, oh, I need to remember who was in it. So it was uh, it was Paul Pierce down here. He was in the locker code and he came down to, well, he's very cheap, isn't he, at the moment. So before the locker code, he was about 20K MT, I think. Uh, and obviously after the locker code, his price has crashed, but prices always come back up after locker codes. So in the locker code, there was him. There was the Amethyst Paul Pierce, which, of course, I have over here. He has been in locker codes so many times this year. And I think the highest price he's gone back up to after being in a locker code was like seven to 8,000 MT. So even he has gone up in price big time. Why do people put diamond contracts on this? I don't know. Uh, so we had the both diamond Paul Pierce's. We had the diamond Jalen Brown, which was from here, which is why I haven't sold him just yet. When he was in the locker code, you could pick this guy up for like 3,000 MT. I had quite a few of you guys tell me you were picking him up for 3,000 MT, and I was saying that's a very good investment. And it looks like already, and it hasn't even been that long, he is back up to around the 7,000 MT mark, probably up 5 to, five to 7K at the moment. So again, such an easy way to make profit. As soon as the locker code comes out, have a look at the players who were in it, and then go ahead and invest in them. There was a Diamond Jojo White who was in it as well. Again, not the best investment in my opinion because this set doesn't lock in for anything. Now, the Diamond Jalen Brown obviously locks in for 100 tokens, which is a set that people want to do. If it doesn't lock in for a collection, chances are you're not going to be getting much profit back from it. And that is the same situation with this Diamond Marker Smart, who is also in the locker code, but again, has uh, recovered. He's got up to about the same price, to be fair. So again, if you are picking them up for like 2,000 to 3,000 MT, you are guaranteed to make profit. And you really can't go wrong. That's why we picked up those Amethyst Shacks earlier on in the year. He was part of a locker code. And uh, yeah, it didn't take long for his price to go up from discard value up to, as you saw, I've been selling them for about 4K. So we've been making about 3,000 MT per profit per card, which is big. And then talking of my investments at the moment, we've got the Thumb Maker sitting right there. We bought Thumb Maker for under 1,500 MT when he was first out. And at the moment, I don't think he's gone up in price too much just because the packs have only just expired. I think he's at about 2,500 MT at the moment. So a little bit lower than that, about 2,000 MT. So we can still make 500 MT profit, which isn't much. I am hoping he goes up to the three to 4,000 MT mark and double my money on it. And then I'll look to sell him off. So in case you guys have missed it, throughout the year I have made some big, big profit on some of these guys. I invested heavily in Chauncey Billips and Steve Nash back in the day and I made massive MT off of those. Obviously we invested in Shaq, that's paid off very nicely indeed. 
Uh, other cards were the Diamond Miles Bridges. I really stocked up on him and made massive profit on him. We've actually made some good profit off Diamond Shoes throughout the year as well. So I think I'm in a pretty good space to say about investments. I mean, my club, my club is just a, a walking is a walking example, a sitting example of um, how much MT we've actually made this year. So if you don't believe me in my investment techniques, then uh, Obviously, you don't have to follow them, but in my opinion, they are the best ones out there. So, yeah, anything that comes out in a locker code, any cards that come out in a new set that are low low tier, so obviously they're being packed loads, and they're being put up for a really, really cheap price. I mean, you're seeing these Danny Mannings, 6,500 MT. This card is such a good investment. So I'm probably going to end up picking up 15 of him. I'll probably get 10 Jarrett Culvers and 10 Jay Williamses. And, of course, you've got to be patient when investing. It's not going to happen overnight. These packs are in the auction house for another, in the pack market, for another basically five days. And after they've come out of packs, you're still then going to have to wait a couple of weeks for the prices to sort of stabilise and then start to rise as well. So it's a long game, but if you're patient, it definitely, definitely does pay off. So they are basically my tips for investing. So locker codes, basically any cheap, low-rated cards you think are very good. If they're meta, uh, which obviously there's Danny Manning is, Jay Williams is, Pascal definitely is, these two guys as well. If they're meta, if they're going to be used by a lot of people, then definitely go for it and obviously make sure that you're not spending too much on the card so even these are low risk but they do have high rewards as well so that's basically it in terms of my tips for investing so let's jump into some comments from yesterday's video so first off marlon says hey jd my friend says off balling is a legit strategy in 2k and the point of defense is to make it impossible to score i was wondering your opinion on this so if you're solely off balling if you're just camping in the paint it's just not for like you might as well play against the cpu you might as well play offline if you're just going to do that because for your opponent it is just no fun at all especially at the moment when every card out there has like hall of fame clamps 99 perimeter defense things like that it's just so boring to play against now obviously a mixture of on ball and off ball is absolutely fine i play the same way if someone calls for a screen i'll switch to off ball make sure my center goes underneath it and let the point guard fight over the screen so a mixture is good but if you're just solely off balling I personally don't have any respect for that play style, but you know what? Everyone plays the way that they want to. It's up. Andrew says, what small forward shall I pick up? I have around 500k. Well, like I said, third video of the day, I'm actually going to be listing my best small forwards, or my favourite small forwards in the game. If you've got 500k, you might as well go for this guy right here. You might as well ball out, spend pretty much all your MT, and get the best of the best in terms of Galaxy Opal KD. Next up, William Miller. JD, should I sell Pink Diamond Devon Booker? Uh, let's have a look at Devin Booker's price. I have no idea what he's going to be selling for. Uh, oh, he's not even there, is he? He is down here. Oh, no, you definitely should. I've just remembered. We sold him, didn't we? We sold him for like 90k. Yeah, definitely get him sold. 90k for this card is a madness. He is only this price because he's so rare and he locks in for 100 tokens. He is not that price because of how good he is. There are far better alternatives out there for far cheaper than him. So definitely go ahead and get him sold and cash in, man. So I guarantee you didn't buy or I hope you didn't buy him for that price. Salty Mellon says, I've invested in seven Danny Mannings for 7.5k. He has base 11. Is that good? It's very good. And that is another reason why that card has a potential to go up in price. Base 11 is, of course, a very desirable base this year and last year. So yeah, definitely a very good price to pick him up at. White Man says, when do you think is a good day to sell Evo Ben Simmons? So let's have a look at his price at the moment. So I would say, again, like I said earlier, wait until the mystery player is released, and I do think his price will go up just a little bit. I can definitely see it popping up to about the 700k, maybe even the 800k mark. It completely depends on how good the card is. But I definitely think Evo Ben Simmons is a very good price for 630k. When you look at Pink Diamond Giannis, still selling about 500k, I think that's a very, uh, you'll definitely think he can go up in price. So don't sell him just yet. Chris, do you think the Diamond Paul Pierce's price will go up? I got one from Logger Code, and he's only 10k right now. He definitely will go up. Hold on to him. You can easily see him hitting 15k in the next couple of weeks, uh, and then uh, obviously you'll be making quite a bit of profit. Next up, INF Goated says, I bought Pink Diamond Shaq for 89k. Is he going to go up? Before even looking at his price, I'm going to say no. Uh, we're coming over here to Shaq. Yeah, I mean, I think you've got a good price on him, to be fair. I think you probably will be able to make a little bit of profit. By the looks of it, you should be able to get about 95k back for him, uh, which sadly actually isn't any profit after tax. But yeah, it's not going to go up. Shaq is definitely going to get a better card this year. He's going to get a Galaxy Opal. So he, this card will get outclassed. It doesn't lock in for a reward. Uh, so I definitely think that card is only going to come down in price. So I would say cash in now while you can. Next up, Matthew Williams. I've got a Jay Williams 850 MT. Should I sell now or wait? I mean, that's a massive W, but definitely wait. He will go up in price because it is so uh, such a good card. Brendan O'Leary, who shall I invest in? Watch this episode. There we go. Answer that question for you. Uh, next up, Picklefish. I've got two D Wade's pink diamonds and two Chris Tapses and intend to sell them when the final prime player drops. Is that a good idea? That's a very good idea indeed, and it's exactly what I am doing as well. 
Next up, Noah, when should I sell Opal Larry Bird? So they are out of packs at the moment, but of course it is buzzer beater. It doesn't look in for a collection and it looks like he is dirt cheap. Look at this, 250K. Larry Bird, I'll say wait a couple of weeks because, like I said, we've seen it with, uh, actually, what's Vince Carter selling for? He's, yeah, the same, but MJ's gone up in price. Um, Stephen Curry, it's about 250k. I mean, he should easily be up at 250k after a couple of weeks. I wouldn't sell for anything less than that, in my opinion. Next up, Isaac says, Hi, JD, what do you recommend someone to do with 100k MT and wants to make MT? What should they do? If you don't want the MT straight away, then I would say invest. If you want it quick, I mean that you can snipe, I guess. That is a way to do it. I don't snipe because I don't have the patience to do so. Uh, but other than that, you just want to be playing the game modes. Man. Just get grinding triple threat online. You can get some really, really good rewards in that. And of course, have a look at the agenda and the limited time events, and they will also help you make quite a bit of MT. Next up, Oscar, how do you like KD, JD? I commented on a video recently that I didn't like his release, and DBG also said in a tier list that there's just something about him. What are your thoughts? So, I mean, we had the gameplay with him yesterday, and he shot a 16 for 26 game, which wasn't bad, I have to say. I did really like him. I like him. I haven't used him too much to be able to give a definitive answer. He does miss a couple of shots where you think, like, damn, you really should have made that. And he does, uh, like, full white some shots where you think that was definitely green. Uh, but I think, yeah, you just expect so much from these cards that even if they miss one shot, you think, damn, that should have gone in. At the start of the year, it's quite nice using ruby cards and lower because you don't expect them to do things. So when they do, it's actually a bonus. When you've got Galaxy Opals, you expect them to be hitting every shot. But I still do really, really like that card. Next up, SF Axe says, what is the best playbook for Unlimited? The box playbook gives you plenty of five out plays. And of course, five out is still very, very effective in this game so yeah definitely go ahead and pick that up if you are looking for a playbook next up davis who is better pink diamond jeremy lynn or diamond malcolm brogdon i'm gonna say diamond malcolm brogdon i don't even have him yet but i'm gonna say malcolm brogdon those cards are just so so juiced those spotlight sim cards are so damn good uh, and of course pink diamond jeremy lynn takes so long to evo if you've got him evo already then obviously that's fine but if you haven't got him evo then do not go for it and definitely just go ahead and get the diamond Mal malcolm brogdon Heisenberg says, KD is easily the best small forward of the game, been using Opal Mellow since early yesterday, and he's not even in the same league as KD. So I actually had a comment uh, yesterday, I think, or the day before, saying to actually pick up the Mellow because he was better than KD, but now you've come in and saying the uh, saying the opposite thing. So if we compare them two, uh, Mellow has a post game, which is fine. He has a little bit of driving dunk on him as well, but defensively, KD has plus 38 on the block, plus 30 on the offensive rebounding, and they're very similar in the speed, and their badges are very, very similar as well. And I think in terms of animations, KD is going to have the better animations. And obviously he's a little bit taller and yeah, defensively is much better. So I'm very happy with my KD. I don't think I'm in a rush to um, buy another Galaxy Opal. So I don't really need to go ahead and buy him. Next up, Bernardo. JD, I have Glitch LeBron and Glitch Giannis. And I was thinking of selling them and Pink Diamond Clay to go for Magic and Galaxy Opal Carmelo to complete the set. Is that a good move? I have to say, that's not a bad move to be fair. At the end of it, you're going to be getting three endgame cards. You're going to be getting your starting point guard, your starting small forward, and your starting centre. And then you only need, really need to find another two players. You know, Magic's not going to get a better card this year. Melo's not going to get, get, not going to get a better card. And neither is Carl Anthony Towns. So these are the best versions of these cards. So they're always going to have some value. And of course, if you're locking them in, it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, and you do get some other good cards in this set. Leighton is pretty good. He could be your power forward. Danny Manning, of course, could be your power forward. So, yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea for selling off the um, glitch LeBron and Giannis, who obviously don't lock in for anything. They're going to get better cards throughout the year. LeBron's obviously getting a Galaxy Opal. Giannis is obviously getting a Galaxy Opal. So definitely cash in on these guys now while you can, while their prices are still reasonably high. Next up, Jake says, I have 110k. Who should I buy? I need a small forward and a shooting guard. Small forward, Danny Manning, 8k, absolutely sorted. And then shooting guard, I mean, if you want someone really cheap, Amethyst Lance Stevenson. If you want to ball out a little bit more, you can go for the Pink Diamond Buddy Heald, who is about 60k, which is still a really good price for a card that damn good. And you're still going to have plenty of MT left uh, to spend. Next up, we've got two comments about Cam Reddish. So Sean Good says, Reddish is better than Isaac. And then DC Dunk, I would highly, rec I would highly recommend putting Reddish at the backup small forward in place of Isaac. Once you get his release, he is almost unguardable. Okay, so let's have a look at these two cards. So Jonathan Isaac, let's compare him with the Cam Reddish who came out yesterday, or didn't come out yesterday, but we got him yesterday. So six foot eight against six foot ten. 19 Hall of Fame badges against 18. I think they're probably very similar badges. Jonathan Isaac has the post game, pretty irrelevant. Shooting, very similar. Driving, very similar. Passing goes to Cam Reddish. Defensively, interior, massively goes to Jonathan Isaac. So does the rebounding. Speed does, though, go over to Cam Reddish. So 
I don't know. I just like having Jonathan Isaac because of the, his defensive presence, his rebounding. We could probably add in Cam Reddish down here, to be fair, off the bench at the uh, 13th man spot right here. But then we've got uh, no cover at the small... Well, we do have one. We Joel Embiid can play power forward. Cam Reddish is... I don't know. We'll figure it out. But I don't think he is that much better than Jonathan Isaac. He's got his benefits, obviously, but I think Jonathan Isaac is a really damn good card. I think you guys might be sleeping on him because I really, really do enjoy him. Next up, Joseph Ramsey. What do you think of that Diamond J Williams? To me, he's a really good scorer. He has Hall of Fame range extender clamps and not a bad thing in... And the only bad thing is he's six foot two. I just want to see your opinion. Yeah, a fantastic card. Uh, we can compare him to Galaxy Opal Derek Rose and it's not even that far off of a comparison because 97 driving layup, 95 driving dunk, 95 mid, 94 three, 92 passing, 93 steel, 88 perimeter D and 98 speed. It is an incredible card. For the price you can get it at, it is incredible. It's ridiculous this year how good of a team you can get for such a cheap budget. I think over the next couple of days, we're going to have to do like a 100k squad builder or maybe even a 50k squad builder, maybe even a 10k squad builder. Let me know down below if you want to see those type of videos because I think we can make a ridiculously good teams for those prices. And the last comment for now, I say balling, do you plan to play DBG again? Absolutely. We're definitely going to be getting in a game soon. My team has, of course, taken on leaps and bounds since the last time we played. The series this year is currently 2-1 to him. We won the last game. He won the first two. We brought it back on that last game. And I feel pretty confident going in and playing him again. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to get a game in. So that's going to be it for the first video of the day. Yeah, it is the first one. As usual, guys, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.